Okay, this is Brent Leary, and with me today is Autumn Braswell. Autumn is the Chief Operating Officer for i -Corps. Autumn, thank you for joining me today. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. So we're going to talk about the results of this really interesting survey you guys did. It's called Customer and Product Experience 360, um, and it's a survey that you guys put on. And some of the really interesting results that came out of it, particularly when it comes to the whole smart home and the connected devices and kind of the first adopter of these folks and and uh, get into some of the interesting tidbits of it. But before we do that, maybe you can give me a little of your personal background. Sure. So I've been in the services business for 18 years now, um, primarily on the what we call the product support side. So after a product is sold, any of the services that, that uh, go along with that. And so started in operations 18 years ago, um, running a, a line out of our Louisville, Kentucky facility, and then um, moved into strategic management, did uh, a lot of our acquisitions, did a stint on the manufacturing side, and then uh, came back to uh, the services side about three years ago when i kind of acquired the Jable Aftermarket Services and really put together this integrated offering between products and, and customer journey. Yeah. So maybe at a higher level, just tell us a little bit more about i -Corps. Yeah, i is a really interesting company that probably no one has ever heard of. So we're the, <laughs> we're the name behind a lot of brands. So um, in practical terms, what we do is for our clients, uh, and our clients can be original equipment manufacturers, carriers, media companies, financial services, and, and what we do for them is every customer touch point, so if they're doing customer acquisition, if they're doing retention and loyalty services, technical support, um, even some back office work, um, but then we also handle the product journey, so anytime there's actually something wrong with your device, um, a, a lot of the time we're the ones that get it back and repair it and get it back to you um, or have one there for you if, if uh, they're doing kind of an advanced exchange. So um, very, very interesting company, not, not any other ones like us. There's a lot of companies that do either the customer side or the product side, but uh, we combine both, which, which is why this survey was so interesting to us. Yeah, so tell us a little bit more about the survey and particularly why did you decide to do it now? Yeah, so um, because we we have the uh, privilege of covering a, a lot of different market verticals and also a lot of the different players in those in those verticals, we actually have an interesting kind of bird's eye view of the ecosystem. And uh, connected home uh, specifically is becoming a very complex ecosystem, and so we we saw a lot of the inefficiencies and customer frustration in having to deal with multiple companies if something was wrong with a device, and, and also kind of this lack of data following the customer, so a lot of repeat. And, and then what we also see in our depot, depending on the product, we'll see up to 60% of the devices with actually nothing wrong with them. So they, we knew there was a lot of frustration and leakage in the system, and so we wanted to hear from the consumer's point of view, kind of where did they have frustration, what was their journey, and what was their kind of preferred method of being serviced. So give us some of the key takeaways and maybe even some of the surprising findings that came out of this. Yeah, so um, again, we, we kind of knew that they were having to deal with multiple parties if they had an issue to be resolved. And, and that was kind of validated that they were having to deal um, with two to three different companies over three different sessions and um, three different people they were talking to. So, so we got to validate that point. Um, some interesting things is they typically went through eight different items to, to on that on that uh, service journey. So eight different places, starting with you know kind of self help, um, and then entering the customer service at at, at a certain point. Um, so that was that was very interesting that they were spending an hour and a half of their own time mm. doing self help, um, and then an additional hour uh, with service and support. But one of the more interesting elements is we asked, we gave them kind of a list of 20 different things they could do, everything from read the manual, ask a friend, um, all the way through to ultimately calling the customer service number. And, and we asked them to rate that on two, from two lenses. One is convenience 
and the other being effectiveness. And the top rated uh, way that was most effective and most convenient was YouTube. And, and the fourth most convenient and effective was expert crowd forums. So I, I think you know those two things really speak to um, both the, the digital means in which uh, people like to engage in self-help with the video content, but also how we have to start thinking about the crowdsourcing element and, and helping service our, our customers. So, and the folks that participated in this survey, these are folks that are early adopters. Maybe you could just give us a little bit of the profile of what these folks are like. Yeah, and, and that was uh, maybe shouldn't have been so surprising to us. So um, we had over 6,000 folks uh, come into the survey. And, and in order to participate in the survey, they had to have a uh, mobile phone and, and not a feature phone, like a smartphone. Uh, they had to have a computer or laptop. And then they had to have at least two connected devices in their home, and it could be anything, a connected thermostat, a connected light bulbs, or, you know, a, 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 you know, a wink system. So they had to have at least two of those. And, and, and then ultimately, we were looking for folks that had had a problem in the last two years, some, some support-related event. And so when we got through the demographics of those folks, um, our demographics ended up being about 59% early adopters. Uh, where in the normal kind of uh, population curve, you'd see about 17%. And so I think thinking about the folks that we were um, actually having do the survey are those that are tech savvy, that are um, interested in technology, that typically don't have a problem. And so to see, you know, um, so many of them have an issue in the last two years and primarily around um, installation and setup. Um, just really speaks to the fact that if um, the connected home providers want to see this mass adoption that we all want and to accelerate that, we really have to um, make it a lot easier out of the box, um, first of all. And second of all, kind of think about the ecosystem these things are living in and, and how do we create um, content in a way that helps um, them kind of get them up and running very quickly. It also seems to me, and I, I guess I consider myself an early adopter, is I've, I've got a lot of connected things in my house. Um, one thing that's just stood out to me is, and I guess I kind of fall into this too, is I actually did look at the manual um, because I couldn't get it to work out. Just proof. I actually did look at the manual. But how are the expectations and behaviors changing uh, when it comes to using these home technologies, these connected devices? How is that changing the expectations of, of customers? And it it seems like you guys had a lot of early adopters. Uh, so how is it changing early adopters' expectations for using these kind of devices? Yeah, and I, I can't believe you also read the manual. We, nah. were, surprised see, <laughs> we were surprised to see that 59% of our respondents, that was the first place they went. I didn't even know they existed anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the the expectations with consumers is is at an all time high. Um, I mean, there was a, a, a case of, you know a time even with the initial smartphones where I think people were a lot more patient in trying to understand what is this going to do for me. Um, but you know, consumers have this expectation that these connected devices are going to work together seamlessly. It's going to create a very personalized experience for them. Uh, so when I talk to my virtual assistant and I tell um, Alexa, I hope I didn't turn her on I for you. I turned mine off just. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, when I tell Alexa to turn on my Hue light bulbs and turn down my thermostat, that all of that works very seamlessly. Um, so the expectations are extremely high, but the ecosystem hasn't caught up with that yet. Um, the companies still are having to work through multiple protocols um, with between the devices and, and also thinking about this less about the point solution like connecting my thermostat and more about how does the thermostat live in the entire home all right so I mean there's a lot of things going on uh, there's a lot of moving parts but it's not necessarily a uh, nice to have it's almost a need to have in terms of engaging uh, your customers and prospects through some of these uh, these devices and ecosystems. So how do companies that haven't gotten started but know they need to get going, how do they do it the right way so that they create the kind of experiences and journeys that customers are expecting today? 
Yeah, it's a great question. And, and I would say that you, you start by understanding understanding that consumer's expectations of that device, not just as a, as a single device, but how is it expecting it to interact with the rest of the home. Um, I think map out the customer journey. You know, that's not a, a new tactic, but, uh, you know, the customer interaction or touch points with the brand are no longer just single points or a single stream, but they're, you know, they're in multiple different places and understanding what does that mean and meeting the customer where they want to be met. You know, we talked about different mediums and consuming things they way they want. Um, you have to think about that a lot more holistically. So when you create a piece of service content, you must deliver it both in video, um, deliver it in an FAQ, you know, arm these crowdsourcing um, experts with that information. And, and so I think it's about just thinking about the service more holistically and to your point, really understanding that customer's expectation of that device and making it pretty seamless out of the box. And apparently you also have to make a really good manual that people can really good to use manual. And, and get some benefit out of. Uh, Autumn, uh, where can people learn more about i and uh, some of the things you guys are doing? Yeah, um, definitely go to iCore.com. Uh, we're also on Twitter and Instagram and um, on our LinkedIn page. We, we like to put a lot of great content about ourselves and the, and the excellent clients we get to work with. 